Not only having a passion to architecture and painting, Catherine liked to award generously her court favorites. Grigory Arlov, the empress' chief person empowered, was in special grace during the days of the coup d'etat. She presented him the estate in Gatchina. Arlov appreciated the luxury of the Tsar's presence, but also understood its aesthetic charm as a wonderful natural region. The place glows with its magnificence and romantic animation. He made Gatchinam his permanent summer residence and carried on building works which his unlimited resources afforded. He purchased works of art, statues, pictures, furniture, and weapons. For the foundation of the palace on the top of the hill, he invited the famous architect Antonio Rinaldi, who constructed the Skate Mountain and China Palace in Orienenbaum. The creative work of Rinaldi was rather popular at that time. Here in this solitude space, Rinaldi constructed a magnificent towering castle. In elaboration of this project, he widely used the architectural device of the Renaissance epochs with galleries and terraces. The extensive use of local stone extracted from nearby Gatchina gave the unique charm of the ensemble. Arlov's period in the history of Gatchina embraces 18 years. The life of Gatchina's landlord was tightly united with the residents in Tsarskaya Selo. The court periodical of Catherine II, where all the details of court life were fixed, was joyfully with notes about the Empress's visit to Gatchina and of her pastime there. They were dinners and evening meals, outings on foot and by springless carriage, on the lake in a small boat and very often hunting or falconry. The huge lake and the forest park covering more than 700 hectares was a wonderful place for festive life. After the death of Grigory Arlov, Catherine purchased from his ancestors the Gatchina estate and presented it to her son Pavel. Thus, a new page in the history of the ancient Grange began. In his youth, Pavel acquired skills in government and became an active statesman. But Catherine ignored and humbled her son all her life. Having sent Pavel to Gatchina, she sent the violent opponent of her politics far away from the court. Here, Pavel performed his small guards and tried to establish a new lifestyle here. He inherited from his father, Peter III, a passion for the military. Here, he organized endless maneuvers and parades and created plans for his future reign. Having ascended to the throne after his mother's death, Pavel ordered the architect Vincenzo Brenna build the palace. He altered the facade and most of the interiors. The conversion to the Imperial Rome's architecture with its pompous decorativeness is typical for Brenna's creative work, which corresponded to the taste of the new emperor. From two rooms of the old Arlov's palace, Brenna created the marble dining room, which became the last hall before the throne hall in the Gala Enfila. There is a gilded carved throne in the throne hall where Pavel, who awaited his hour, sat solemnly. Walls of the throne hall, which was formerly Count Arlov's cabinet, are decorated with Asian and African espaliers, weaved in the Nelson's workshop at the end of the 18th century. 
The master worked for more than a year creating one meter of Vespaliano. The tapestry called Serrera, above the fireplace, is a present from Louis XVI to Pavel and Maria. In the next room, there is a door which leads to the underground passageway, which leads to the park and the nearby lake. Altering the orders of Pavel I, Vincenzo Brenna respected Rinaldi's creation and saved the basic project of his predecessor. The walls of the White Hall, decorated by Rinaldi, are adorned with depictions of animals, marble bas reliefs on the Gomer subject theme and on Alexander Makedonsky's history. Marble statues and busts of antique gods and heroes are placed along the walls. In the 19th century, Gatchina became the residence of all the following Russian governors. After members of the Narodnaya Volya, People's Freedom, had killed Alexander II, his son Alexander III moved here with his family and made Gatchina the place of his permanent residence. The childhood of the future Emperor Nikolai II, the last Russian Tsar, was spent here. The new castle's owners continued to increase the unique collection of weaponry which was started by Grigory Arlov. proprietors collected different works of art, painting, sculptures, articles of furniture, and decorations.
Unexpectedly, the park's lanes take you to a romantic pavilions, columns, and sculptures hidden in the brushwood. The aspiration to approximate the artificial landscapes to natural ones dominate everywhere. The talented artist Henri-Francois Vollier, the author of The Birch Tree, left his name on the pages of Gatchina's architectural history. Inside the pavilion, there is a surprise. A smart boudoir with a plafond depicting Zephyr soars into the sky. Thank you. 